Good morning, class. Good morning. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. If you don't believe it enough to say it, you don't believe it enough to get it. So don't, don't just sit silent and watch this pass you by. There's a reason why we do these things this way. Uh, the scripture says that the Lord, Jesus, is the high priest of what we say. He works with our words. Uh, just like you were born again, how did that happen? You believed in your heart and you said something with your mouth. And that's how God created everything you see. And so it matters what's coming out of your mouth. We want to stop talking the fear and unbelief and failure, and we want to get the Word of God in our mouths, and we want to get faith in our mouths. And it'll be amazing to see how things change when you start speaking consistently, not just what you see and you feel or what other people are saying, but saying what He says over you. What he says is right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he has said some amazingly good things about you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and believe it and say it. Agree with him. Say it over yourself. Get your Bible and bring it in, uh, into the class with us and let's release faith for answers. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the good things you've done for us and all the good words you've spoken over us because your words our spirit, and they are life. Give us ears to hear today, hearts that can understand and receive and answers for now, and we purpose to be doers of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look please in 1 John, the fifth chapter again, in our great, great infallible textbook. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Like we had mentioned uh, last classes, faith is not just something for Sunday. Faith is a way of living. It is a way of thinking, speaking, responding, acting, reacting. There's a spirit of fear, and there's a spirit of faith. And how does faith come? Anybody remember? It comes by hearing, and we've been seeing, it could be translated accurately, hearing the report. What report? The report of what God has said. His report. In Romans 10, if you want to look at it again, Romans 10, 15, he, uh, he t he's quoting from Isaiah 52, and he says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach or proclaim the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The gospel is good news. It is the good news of the good things our good God has done for us. A lot of good there, huh? Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. That's Bible. That's, uh, that's a core tenet of reality in God. He is good. He is all good. He is not bad, not any bad. <laughs> all good. And I know, you know, people, they, they get confused about that and they want to say all kinds of things about that. We're going to, we're going to see scripture that'll be enlightening on that today, I think. But uh, it's a choice what you believe. And <clears throat> the whole thing we've been seeing is whether you believe the good report or the bad report governs your life. And 
the gospel itself, it governs your eternity. It, it, the, the outcome determines the outcome of your eternity. You, you can't overemphasize the importance of this, which one you believe. There's a lot of voices in the world, and they're all, they ha all have their message, and they're all saying their, their thing, their take on things, their report, if you will. And it's popular to denounce and say there is no God and to make fun of the scriptures and call them myths and all these kind of things. And in a few days, when people leave this life, they're going to find out whether it was true or not. And for many, it'll be too late. And it'll be sad because they chose to deny God's report and treat him like he was a liar. And they chose to believe the words of men and their own fantasies their whole life long, and it robbed them of the greatest things in life and in eternity. But by the grace of God, we're not going to do that. Right. How about you, class? We're not. We choose to believe the good news. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. The gospel, the, gospel. The, glad the glad tidings of the good things, the good things. My, good God my good God has given us, has given us in, Christ. in Christ. Hallelujah. He said, for, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? And this is the case today. Like we were just saying, many reject it. They refuse to believe it. So then faith comes by a report and the report by the word of God, by, by what God has said. Go with me, if you would, to Numbers 13 again. We've been looking at this because it is such a perfect example of good report, bad report, choosing which one to believe. It's the account of God delivering his people out of Egyptian bondage. Now, this is history. It's historically accurate, but it's much, much more than that. The scripture tells us that these things that are recorded in the Old Testament are written as examples for us. Well, how can these things under the Old Testament be an example for us under the New Testament? Because God hasn't changed. The enemy hasn't changed. Faith hasn't changed. Good reports and bad reports. Still good reports and bad reports. The thing that has changed is our access to God, our covenant with Him. But, you know, all the basics of faith and fear and all of these things, they, they haven't changed. They're exactly the same. And if we, as a New Testament believer, you're going to walk by faith and live by faith and please God, live victoriously, it'll work exactly the same as it did centuries and centuries ago, millennia ago, before there was an earth. <laughs> because this is how God created the heavens and the earth, was with His faith and His words. Now what happened is He... God delivered his people by amazing miracles and brought them out of slavery. And then they got to the border of Kadesh, where the promised land was, Canaan's land. They sent their reconnaissance group in there. And after over a month, they came back and brought them a report, <laughs> brought them the news of the land. And... They started out good with a good report and said, oh, it is, it is rich, it's lush, it's the rain falls on it, it's well watered. Well, it have to be for this fruit and this produce, right? It's it got to have the right soil, it's got to have the right climate and all of that. And they said, but... <laughs> There are giants everywhere. There's walled cities. There's just no way. 
No way. And Caleb, uh, he, he hushed the people and he said, no, no, let's go up today. Let's go up at once and get it. Faith is always excited. <laughs> Faith, it is. Faith, why? Well, why are they beginning to be depressed? Why are they beginning to, to fall in their countenance? And why didn't he? And why didn't Joshua? Because they saw the same thing. They were two of the twelve that went into the land. They all saw exactly the same thing. And yet, he's excited. Read it again, verse 30. Caleb still the people and Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we're well able to overcome it. Sounds just like faith people today. <laughs> let's, let's claim it. Right. Let's believe it. Let's build it. Mm -hmm. Let's sow it. Yes, sir. Let's get one. Mm -hmm. Let's get three of them. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> And surely as you say that, there'll be all the naysayers, all the wet blankets. And I'm talking about church going people. They'll go, no, 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 no. Just calm down. We can't do all that. No, do you understand the price of gas right now? <laughs> do you understand about inflation? Have you not been watching the reports, the news, yeah, I've been on a different channel though. I've been, I've been listening to a different report. How, do, how can you be excited when everybody else is depressed? Because you're not listening to their report. You're listening to a different report. And the Bible said that Caleb had a different spirit about him. Different spirit listening to a different report, he's got a different take on this situation and he had a different outcome. I mean, the other 10 spies died within days. They're gone. And everybody else of Joshua and Caleb's contemporaries died uh, early in the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years until not one of them was around anymore. And Joshua and Caleb are still kicking at age 85. Hallelujah. And they went in to the promised land and they defeated giants and they took it and Caleb took a nap in his hammock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Out by his fig trees. Oh, glory to God. Why? He had a different spirit. He had a different report. A different confession about what's going on. He had excitement when they were crying and upset. Come on, can you see this? And yet they saw the same thing. Sometimes people talk about how bad things are and how hard things are and like you couldn't understand. Well, they don't know what you're dealing with either. But it's not that the problem is so bad. It's not that the, the needs are so unmeetable, uh, unsurmountable. Giants are not indestructible. Hmm? You know how I know? Seen any giants lately? <laughs> Real giants? No. <laughs> Talking about physical giants. Uh-uh. They all got taken out. And it got started with this. The next generation proved giants were not undefeatable. They were not indestructible. They did it. Why should we be talking about this? Because the New Testament says these things are examples for us. Will we face giants yes, in life, things that seem so big and so hard that in our own strength there's just no way? Will we hear bad reports? Mm -hmm. Will there be naysayers yes, yes. to tell us that'll never change, that cannot be fixed, that is uh, terminal, it's inoperable, you owe too much money, you're too far behind, 
you you don't have the connections, you don't have the education, you don't have, you don't have, it can't, you won't, it'll never. Mm -hmm. If you choose to listen to that and believe that, you will lose your joy, you will lose your peace. When you lose your joy, you lose your strength. And you'll become depressed about it. You'll sigh your way through a boring, menial, minimalistic life, thinking, isn't there more? The answer to that is yes, there's more. But you won't enjoy it. And you can get old and pass on without ever enjoying it. Didn't that group do it? Wandering around 10, 20, 30, 40 years and getting older and older. And, and the promised land is just right over there. But they never enjoyed it, except for Joshua and Caleb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whose company do you want to be in? Huh? <laughs> Who do you want to be your buddies? Who, whose buddy do you want to be? Whose outcome do you want? Desert death or Canaan land hammock? Come on, help me out. Of, then whose report? Will you believe? Huh? Whose report? Whose report? Because the reports are coming at you. You know it. They're coming at you. And before your life is over, you're going to hear some other reports that you didn't want to hear. And I said, well, don't confess that over me. You're in this world, friend. There's going to be stuff to deal with. That you can't escape it. Either you yourself personally or people you care about or people around you, there's going to something come up, you're going to hear a bad report. And it's going to have all the evidence that that's how it is. And, and we're not saying deny that it exists. Those giants were really there. And they were big, bad uh, people killing machines. They were. And I mean <laughs> the thought of going hand to hand with one of these big guys. Is, it would be suicide, insanity. And that's what they're talking about when they said, there's no way. I mean, I don't want to die today. Why do I want to do this? So how does Caleb say, let's go do it? <laughs> how? Where, where did he get? Let's, let's go do it right now. Right now. Get your gear. Strap on your gear. Let's go. We can do it. We can take it. We are not just we, we might make it. We are well able. Right. He's not measuring them against him. He's measuring them against God. And he is full, fully committed to what God said. That what he said is right. What he said is true. And they, they repeated it. Go to the 14th chapter. Verse 6, Joshua the son of Nun. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Unbelief is vexing for faith people. <laughs> and faith is irritating to unbelievers. Huh? It is. They're like, you know, Caleb's already told them, let's go get it, let's go get it, we can do it. And, and they, they immediately they say, we can't, we cannot. There's no way. And what we skipped over in the first part of this chapter is they had cried all night long in their tents about how sad and depressed they were because they can't take the land and they, don't, they can't get it and it's all over. And, and this unbelief is so vexing to Joshua and Caleb, they grab their their, their robe, their shirt, and they rip it and they go, quit it. <laughs> You've got to stop this. They spoke to him. They said, the land which we pass through to search, it is good. It is exceeding good. Very, very good is an accurate translation. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Talk about the land. Quit talking about the giants. Talk about how good it'll feel to be healed. 
Talk about how good it'll be to be out of debt. Huh? Yep. Yeah, but you may have a giant of debt. Huh? He may be going, you'll never pay me off. <laughs> I'm 20 stories tall. I'm $100,000 and 18% interest. I'm a million dollars. Quit talking about how big the giant is. Quit talking. You got you to gotta stop talking about the impossibility of defeating the giant or you'll be just like these guys. And next thing you know, you'll be joy, joyless, no peace, no confidence, and it got dry out there in that desert. And it just stayed dry. It was so dry. How many understand? Going around in circles in 120 degree heat, bone dry, year after year. You talk about boring. You talk about a boring life. You talk about an unfulfilling life. That's what fear and unbelief will get you. And there are people doing this all over the planet and even mad at God because it's this way. But it wasn't God's choice. I said it wasn't God's choice. They actually had to rebel against God to get in this condition. Because he's re- his idea was go into the land. That's his plan. Not wander around out in the desert for 40 years. That wasn't his, that wasn't his plan for them. The Bible said in Hebrews, the works for them to go in the land were finished before the foundation of the world. God had already conceived that and decided it and planned it before they were ever born. And it reveals that just because something is God's will for you does not mean it will automatically happen. You have to cooperate with Him. You have to agree with Him. You have to believe Him. You have to get excited like us. (laughs) You have to get wide-eyed. Wave your hands like Caleb and go, let's do it! We can do it. We're well able to do it. Surely as you do that, man, the enemy doesn't like it. Demons don't like it. Unbelievers don't like it. Intellectuals don't like it. Huh? Y'all come on here with me. All kind of people. Some of your close kin folks may not like it. Right? There's a lot of preachers don't like it. A lot of seminarians don't like it. A lot of theologians don't like it. They are so... I want to say, Lord, deliver us from these negative souls. There are so many that are so grumpy. And so, well, you know, wandering around out in the dry will make you (laughs) grumpy. (laughs) And, And this is true today. There are a bunch of people circling in the dry right now, today, in their lives. And there's a few, though, a few, that are overcomers. Amen. And they, they choose to live like an overcomer. And instead of running and hiding and being cowards, they stand up and, and, and like David, they say, I can take him. <laughs> with God with me and for me, I can do it. I can, I can overcome this with his help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, life is short anyway. Uh, I'd rather, you know, even if I made a mistake on my own, I'd rather fall flat on my face and fail in front of somebody mm-hmm. instead of being too scared to even leave the house, right. even try, even put forth an effort. I'm, I'm a human being. We can make a mistake, but God is gracious and good. Yes. Even if you do, if you'll call on him, even like Peter, if you got to look into the wrong thing and start sinking, cry out for help. Next thing you know, you'll feel that big, strong arm. Woo, hallelujah. Grab you before it's too late and pull you right up out of there. Oh, hallelujah. And with his help, we can make it. No matter what we have to overcome, any corrections we have to make, he'll be with us and we will make it. Keep reading. He said, uh, don't rebel against the Lord. Don't fear the people of the land. They are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them and the Lord is with us. Now notice, skip down to verse 30. Finally, the Lord told the people 
that they were not going into the promised land because they had refused to believe him and that what, had, what they had been saying and crying about was going to happen. Their own words, because they kept saying, we're going to die out here, we're all going to die out here, we're all going to die out here. And he finally, he told them, he said, uh, according to what you said, uh, your words, verse 28, as truly as I live, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. They didn't get what God was speaking over them. They got what they spoke over themselves, even though it was contrary to the will of God. Is there a lesson there for us? Yes. yes, there is. He said, verse 30, Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, except there were only two exceptions to this whole generation. Wow. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. Two exceptions. <laughs> Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they'll know the land which you have despised. They brought up an evil report about what God said was good. They slandered the land, the scripture said. And here he says, you despised the land. Instead of being excited about it, we're going to get it, we're going to go in there, we're going to, we're going to live... They came to the point where they despised it because they believed, I can never have it. And that's why some people are so bitter when they see other people have things and enjoy things is because they believe they can never have it. And it seems so unfair to them that these other people could have it, and why? Can't, but I can't have it. But the thing is, you're believing a lie. You can have it. Amen. Oh, somebody say, I can have it. Amen. I can be free. I can have my needs met. I can be healed. I can be delivered. But you got to believe the Lord's report. You got to quit believing all these naysayers and all these negative folks and all these unbelieving folks. You got to turn that off and quit it. And believe, thus saith the Lord, which is always good news. Good news news, glad tidings of the good things that God has given us. That's the gospel. Somebody say, I believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Our time's up again today, set like we do sometimes. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I am strong in faith, giving glory to God. Yes, you are. We'll see you soon, back here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.